Welcome to the lecture on mathematical finance. In the last lecture, we discussed uh, European contingent claims, and in particular, we focused on the question whether in arbitrage free market models uh, the equivalent Martingale measure is uniquely determined. In that lecture, I would like to focus on pricing European contingent claim. And for that, I have to first come up with a notion of a fair price uh, of a European contingent claim. And this is the statement of the first definition. Maybe I would like to define what I mean by an arbitrary price. So for that, let me um, uh, consider uh, an d e plus one dimensional financial market model, which I would like to denote as usual uh, by S bar. And then a number pi of c, which should be non-negative, is called an arbitrage-free price of a European contingent claim c, is the following holds true. So if you find an adapted stochastic process, which I would like to denote by s d plus 1, for reasons which will become clear in a moment, and this adapted stochastic process should satisfy the following three conditions. First of all, its terminal value should be given in terms of the uh, contingent claim. And let me remind you that by definition, a contingent claim is an F capital T measurable non-negative random variable. So this definition over here makes sense. On the other hand, this number pi of c is simply the initial value of that process. And then the most important property is that the extended d plus two dimensional financial market model consisting of our um, d plus one dimensional market model s bar and this additionally constructed process s d plus one should give rise to an arbitrage free market model. Likewise, we also define the discounted arbitrage free price of uh, a contingent claim and denote it by pi of c divided by s naught capital T. And it is defined um, by the following. You also come up, uh, should find a, an adapted stochastic process as x d plus 1 with a property that its terminal value is given in terms of the discounted contingent claim c divided by s not capital t its initial value is given exactly by that number over here and the extended d plus one dimension uh, d plus two dimensional discounted financial market model x bar t and x d plus one t should be arbitrage free and there's an immediate um, relation between the discounted uh, arbitrage free price of a contingent claim and the arbitrage free price of a contingent claim, namely for the following reason. So if you have constructed this process as d plus 1 and you divide it component-wise by the value of the uh, numerator, then you immediately end up with a process X, no, uh, x d plus 1, which has the properties that its terminal value is given in terms of um, the discounted contingent claim, whereas its initial value is given in terms of the arbitrage-free price of our contingent claim divided by the value of the numerator at time point 0. And um, obviously, um, Whenever this um, extended market model um, S bar T S D plus one is arbitrage free, this also holds true for the discounted um, arbitrage free um, um, market model, um, and uh, vice versa. And from that, you conclude that. Um, the price of the contingent claim is simply 
uh, given in terms of the price of the discounted contingent claim multiplied by the initial value of the numeric. So this brings us now to the first uh, question. So what can we say um, about the existence of such a process uh, in the particular situation when uh, the contingent claim is attainable? So that's the statement of the following lemma. So for that, I consider D plus one dimensional arbitrage free financial market model denoted by S bar and defined on our favorite filtered probability space omega F FTP. And let me remind you that we um, assume that the filtrate or the, the sigma algebra F naught is trivial. And moreover, I consider an unattainable uh, European contingent claim denoted by C. And then the statement is that the arbitrage free price PC, um, pi C, or the discounted arbitrage free price uh, pi of C divided by S naught of capital T is uniquely determined. So meaning that it exists and is unique. So why is that true? Well, due to the assumption that our underlying um, financial market model is arbitrage free, it follows from the first fundamental theorem of asset prices uh, that the set of all equivalent martingale measures is non-empty. So, and we will take advantage of that in the um, uh, existence proof. So for that, consider an um, attainable uh, contingent claim C. Then we know that there exists, by definition, a replicating trading strategy denoted by H bar. Um, um, and, uh, and moreover, uh, we know from theorem 213 that for any um, equivalent martingale measure Q, it holds true that the value of the discounted value process with respect to this replicating strategy H bar at time point T is given in terms of the condition and expectation of the discounted contingent claim. Um, given the sigma algebra f little t with respect to this measure q. And let us take that process and this representation over here as a definition of the value um, um, at time point t of our process x d plus 1. So from theorem to 13 we also know that this process over here, due to that representation, is a non-negative uh, martingale under Q. This is trivial, namely from that follows from that representation over here. And moreover, we know that um, its terminal value is given in terms of the condition expectation of this discounted contingent claim. Uh, given the sigma algebra f capital T. However, we, by, by definition, um, the contingent claim C is f capital T measurable. The same holds true for the terminal value of our numeria. Hence, we can rewrite that conditional expectation in that particular situation when little t is equal to capital T simply um, in terms of, uh, and so using measurable factors, in terms of that discounted contingent claim. So hence we have found now two things, namely first of all we have come up with Martingale and its terminal value co uh, coincides with um, the uh, discounted contingent claim, meaning um, uh, first of all that this extended d plus two dimensional 
discounted price process is a martingale under Q and by the first fundamental theorem of asset prices, therefore uh, arbitrage free. And moreover, the discounted price and the discounted arbitrage rate price of this discounted contingent claim is simply given in terms of the initial value of that process. And this is nothing else by definition as the conditional expectation of the discounted contingent claim with respect to the sigma algebra F naught. But by our assumption on the filtration F, we know that uh, the filtration F naught is uh, trivial, meaning that this condition expectation is equal to the expectation of this discounted contingent claim uh, with respect to this measure Q. And by the previous remark, we, also, uh, we have immediately also an ex expression for the price of the, the arbitrage price of the contingent claim C, namely in terms of that expectation multiplied by the initial value of the numerator. So this shows the existence of a uh, um, discounted arbitrage free price and a discounted uh, and an uh, arbitrage free price. Uh, so what about uniqueness? But uniqueness is an immediate consequence of our corollary uh, 2.14. So why is that? Well, um, uh, the statement of this uh, corollary was the following, namely that the initial value of our discounted value process with respect to this um, uh, replicating strategy H bar is independent of the choice of our equivalent Martingale measure. So that shows that this value is uniquely determined and hence also the arbitrage free price is uniquely determined. So after we have discussed here uh, the, the price of an attainable uh, contingent claim, let us now focus on the question what can we say in a general situation. So and that's the um, statement of the following theorem. Namely, we would, like, we would like to characterize the set of our, all arbitrage reprises. So for that, let me again consider a d plus one dimensional arbitrage free financial market model denoted by S bar and defined on our favorite probability space omega F FTP. Again, as the filtration has the property that the sigma algebra uh, F naught is trivial and I consider now a, a European contingent claim denoted by C. And let me denote by capital Pi of C divided by S naught of T the set of all discounted arbitrage free prices of C. So and then it holds true that first of all the set of all discounted arbitrage free prices of C is non-empty. And moreover, we have a clear characterization of that set, namely in terms of the expectation of the discounted contingent claim with respect to that um, equivalent martingale measure Q, provided that the expected value of this discounted contingent claim with respect to Q is finite. And uh, moreover, uh, upper and lower bounds of that set are given in terms of the infimum of this expected value uh, with respect to all equivalent Martingale measures and likewise the upper bound is given by the um, supremum of this expected value under, uh, with respect to all equivalent Martingale measures. And you see what is um, the, the point here um, concerning the upper and lower bounds? Well, obviously, if, when you take the infimum over all equivalent Martingale measures 
uh, which have the additional property that that expectation over here is finite, uh, then it is clear that uh, this number over here is a lower bound of that set, and that number over here would be then an upper bound. And the, the statement here is that this is also true if we take the infimum over all equivalent martingale measures. So let us now come to the proof. So at the first, as a first step, I would like to show the equivalence between these two sets. And for that, I have to show two inclusions, namely, first of all, that the set of all discounted arbitrage reprises should be contained in that set over here and uh, the other way around. So let us uh, focus first on the inclusion that the set of all arbitrage reprises uh, is contained in the set of all expected values of the discounted contingent claim with respect to an um, uh, equivalent martingale measure which satisfies this additional um, integrability condition. And uh, here it is clear what we should show. We pick an element from that set over here and show that this element is also contained in that set. So, so denote this element which we pick from this set of all discounted arbitrage reprises of this contingent claim C. And uh, then by definition we know that there exists an adapted stochastic process xd plus 1 with the following two properties. First of all, its initial value is given in terms uh, of this value pi. Its terminal value is given in terms of the random variable c divided by s naught of t. And moreover, we know that the extended financial market model, which is then a d plus two-dimensional process, um, is uh, arbitrage free. Hence, we can apply um, the first fundamental theorem of asset prices, meaning theorem 2.11, to conclude that there exists an equivalent martingale measure for our extended financial market model. Um, and this immediately implies that all components xit are uh, integrable with respect to that measure q. And this holds true for any component i from 1 to d plus uh, 1. And moreover, we know that the expected value of xit with respect to the measure q, which is nothing else but the conditional expectation of this random variable given the sigma algebra f0, due to the assumption that f0 is uh, trivial. And now I can use the martingale property to um, conclude that this random variable over here is equal to xi0 uh, q almost joy. And this I would like to use in a moment. Namely, we can conclude from these two observations that first of all, uh, since we know that um, every component is integrable, this also applies now to this uh, d plus 1 component at the terminal value capital T. So that expectation is finite. By that expectation is nothing else but the expectation of the discounted contingent claim with respect to this martingale measure Q. On the other hand, we also know that um, uh, the conditional expectation of x and uh, d plus 1 at the terminal value capital T given the sigma algebra f0 is the same as x0 d plus 1. And we defined that value over here in terms of pi. So on, on the other hand, we also know that this terminal value is simply given in terms of this discounted contingent claim, meaning that we can replace that random variable by that random variable, and then taking advantage of the fact that f0 is trivial, this um, uh, conditional expectation actually is equal 
uh, to the expected value of the discounted contingent claim with respect to that measure Q, Q are much shorter. So, hence we have shown now the following. This element pi is indeed contained in the set of all expected values um, of this discounted contingent claim with respect to an equivalent measure, a uh, martingale measure Q, which has the property that this expected value is finite. So this shows the first inclusion. Let us now focus on the other con uh, in inclusion. Namely, we would like to show that uh, the set of all these expected values is contained in the set of all discounted arbitrage free prices. So for that, let us pick a um, measure Q from the set of all um, equivalent martingale measures and denote by pi um, the expected value of the discounted contingent claim under Q. And here we choose Q in such a way that this expected value is finite. And then I would like to define the following process xd plus 1 uh, by setting its value at time point t to the conditional expectation of the discounted contingent claim given the sigma algebra ft. And this conditional expectation is um, taken with respect to this measure q. And clearly by that construction, this process xd plus 1 is a martingale under q and it has a property that its initial value is equal to pi and its terminal value due to the fact that this discounted contingent claim is an f capital T measurable vari a variable is equal to the value of the discounted contingent claim Q or most sure. Since we know that Q is a martingale measure, we know that the discounted price process is a martingale under Q. We have shown or constructed um, this process xd plus 1 in such a way that also that component is a martingale under Q, meaning that this extended uh, financial market model is again a uh, martingale under Q. Hence, as uh, a set of all martingale measures is non-empty and this implies by the first uh, fundamental theorem of asset prices that um, this extended um, financial market model is arbitrage free, meaning that this value pi we defined over here is indeed contained in the set of all discounted prices for the contingent claim C. And in that way we have uh, proven the equality between these two sets. So let us now focus on the question uh, whether or not that um, set of all discounted contingent claims is non-empty. And for that I would like to take advantage of that equality between these two sets. To start with, let us define a probability uh, measure P twiddle on the measurable space omega f in the following way. Uh, so P twiddle of any um, measurable set taken from the sigma algebra f is given in terms of the expected value with respect to that measure p of the indicator function of a times the following density. It's simply um, the random variable 1 plus uh, the discounted contingent claim inverse and then properly normalized. And obviously by that construction we know that this measure p twiddle is absolutely continuous with respect to p. And uh, we also know that this ra its rather nicotine derivative dp twiddle by dp is given in terms of this um, um, random variable 1 plus uh, z divided by s naught of t inverse uh, divided by the uh, expectation of that random variable with respect to p. But now the following holds true. First of all, we have an upper bound um, for
of that expected value. Namely, simply by dropping that um, random variable over here, meaning we make one plus that random variable smaller by replacing it by one, and uh, we get an upper bound, namely in terms of one. On the other hand, we also know that the um, discounted contingent claim is a real valued um, random variable because as uh, this process S not capital T or that random variable over here um, uh, is non-zero due to the assumption that the process S not is a numerator. And this immediately implies that that random variable over here is positive P almost surely. Hence, uh, we know that the radon nicotim derivative is positive P almost surely, and now we can apply the theorem 1.8, which tells us that P twiddle is not only absolutely continuous with respect to P, but actually P twiddle is equivalent to P. So we have constructed in that way an equivalent measure, measure with respect to P. So let us now compute the expected value of our discounted contingent claim with respect to that measure p twitter. So first we can rewrite it in terms of um, uh, the expected value with respect to this measure p and for that we have to uh, take into account that radon nicotim derivative and now you see this um, immediately um, gives rise to the following product. So taking out that normalization constant, which is over here, we end up then with the following product. And in this second expected value, you see that you can get in immediately an upper bound by simply dropping that one. Then this expected value is bounded from above by one, meaning we get an upper bound for that value in terms of the expected value of uh, that random variable over here with respect to p, and then we take the inverse. So and you see, I claim that that um, uh, expected value over here is finite, p almost surely. So why is that the case? Well, since we have here one divided by that expected value, this would be infinite if and only if uh, that, run, uh, that expected value without this uh, uh, exponent minus 1 is equal to 0, but since that random variable inside here is non-negative, so it would mean that that random variable over here is 0, um, uh, p almost surely, but this immediately implies that the discounted um, contingent claim has to be infinity, p almost truly, uh, but we have chosen um, both the contingent claim as a real valued random variable, meaning that this p almost truly finite, and moreover the numerator as not uh, at the terminal time point t is strictly positive p almost truly. Hence that is ruled out, meaning indeed that expected value over here uh, or this, this fraction is uh, finite. So moreover we know by assumption that the discounted price process is arbitrage free um, and we also get then uh, that this discounted price process is arbitrage free with respect to that pro a filter probability space omega f f t p twiddle. Why is that the case? Well, conditions of arbitrage freeness only depends on the null sets and the null sets between uh, the probability measure p and the probability measure p twiddle coincide due to the fact that p and p twiddle are equivalent. So hence we can apply again the first fundamental theorem of asset prices to conclude that uh, the corresponding um, set of equivalent martingale measures is non-empty, meaning 
that you find uh, in equivalent martingale measure Q, which is absolutely continuous with respect to P twiddle. And moreover, we also know that the radom nicodem derivative dQ by the P, um, P twiddle is uh, P, um, P twiddle almost truly bounded. So from that observation, we conclude that the expected value of the discounted contingent claim with respect to this measure Q, which can be written in terms of the expected value of the discounted contingent claim times the radon nicodem derivative dQ by dQ P twiddle with respect to that measure P twiddle. And now we can take advantage of the fact that this radon nicodem derivative is P, on P twiddle almost truly bounded, meaning we can take and uh, replace that random nicodem derivative by um, the upper bound k and in that uh, way we obtain an upper bound namely the product k times the expected value of the discounted contingent claim with respect to p twiddle but in that computation over here we have shown that that uh, expectation is indeed finite meaning um, clearly we have found an equivalent martingale measure q twiddle such that this value is finite meaning by what we have shown before the set of all discounted con uh, arbitrary prices is non-empty what i would like to show now is that uh, the set of all arbitrage free uh, prices is indeed an interval. So why is that the case? So uh, to simplify a notation a little bit, let me denote by m star naught the set of all equivalent Martingale measures which have the additional property that um, the expected value of the discounted contingent claim with respect to that measure q has finite expectation. And obviously that set over here is a convex set because uh, for any convex combination of elements from that set uh, you immediately see that also the expected value with respect to that measure q alpha uh, by rewriting it in terms by using simply the linearity um, is uh, given as this uh, convex combination of these expected values, but since we know that those expected values are finite, also the convex combination is finite, meaning uh, that this set M star naught is indeed a convex set. And moreover, the functional which maps elements from this um, uh, set M star uh, naught to the reals, uh, meaning we map any equivalent martingale measure to this expected value is a linear map. This simply follows from the definition of that integral with respect to this measure Q. And from that we can conclude that also the range of um, this uh, linear functional L is a convex set. So why is that true? Well, simply pick two elements x and x twiddle from the range of that linear map, meaning that there exist uh, two um, equivalent martingale measures q and q twiddle um, uh, with uh, the uh, uh, chosen from that set m star naught, such that um, the convex combination, which is nothing else than um, as the uh, convex combination of L of Q plus L of Q twiddle. Now, by using the linearity of that map L, we can also write that as L of um, alpha Q plus 1 minus alpha Q twiddle, meaning the convex combination of elements from that set M star naught. And uh, clearly that is an element in, um, 
uh, in M star not again, meaning that indeed this is an element from the range of L, which proves that indeed the range is a convex set. And since the range of this uh, functional L coincides with the set of all arbitrage-free and uh, discounted uh, prices of the contingent claim, we know that this set here is a convex set. And this immediately implies that, since we know that this set is non-empty, that this set has to be an interval. If it's consists of, uh, if it's not an interval, this would lead immediately to a contradiction. So meaning, this set of all discounted arbitrary prices is contained in that interval of the infimum of all q taken from the set m star naught of this expected value and the supremum of all q uh, taken from the set m star naught of this expected value. So concerning the bounds, we have to show the following, namely that the infimum over all q chosen from m star naught of that expected value coincides with the infimum of all q taken from the set m star. So why is that true? Well, that's trivial. Why? Let me rewrite the infimum of all q uh, taken from the set of all equivalent martingale measures in terms of the infimum of the infimum over all q uh, taken from the set m star naught of this expected value and the infimum over all q taken from the complement in m star naught of the set m uh, in m star of the set m m star naught of this expected value. But you know, for any q which is an equivalent Martingale measure but which does not satisfy the integrability condition, we know that this. Um, expected value is equal to infinity. Hence, the in, on the other hand, we know that that um, number over here, uh, so that number over here is finite. So meaning, since this is infinity, the infimum between that set and uh, uh, so that number and that number is equal to um, the infimum over uh, q taken from m star not of that expected value uh, of this contingent discounted contingent claim with respect to that measure q. And that proves um, the uh, equality between that set. Why? Because an upper bound is simply given in terms of, so if you restrict the, the set over which you take the infimum, you get an upper bound. So by restricting uh, the set to m star naught, we also have an upper bound and then you see indeed this uh, infimum is bounded from above and below by exactly that infimum. So let us now come to the more interesting situation, namely to show that the same, re the same uh, statement also holds true for the supremum of this uh, expected value of the discounted contingent claim with respect to the measure Q, where we choose Q on the one hand from the set m star naught on, on the other hand from the set m star. So let us divide the proof in two steps. So in case the, the set of all um, equivalent martingale measures such that the expectation of the discounted contingent claim is equal to infinity, uh, infinity is empty, then we have nothing to prove. So it suffices to consider this case that the uh, difference between um, the set of all equivalent martingale measures and the set of all equivalent martingale measures with finite expectation of the discounted contingent claim uh, is non-empty. So this implies that for any uh, positive number c, there exists uh, um, a price pi taken from the set of all discounted contingent, uh, uh, um, discounted arbitrage free prices, such that pi is larger than c. 
Okay, so now let us choose an um, equivalent um, martingale measure from exactly this set m star without m star naught. So then for any um, um, positive number c, we find an n in the natural number such that the following holds true, namely if we take the expected value of the discounted contingent claim minimum n and we compute the expected value with respect to that uh, probability measure p infinity we can ensure that that expected value is larger than c provided we choose n large enough why well if we let n tends to infinity by monotone conversion that expected value converges to infinity so meaning for large enough n, we can ensure that that value is larger than c. So now define a process x d plus 1 in the following way. We set its value at time point little t um, as the conditional expectation with respect to this measure p infinity of the discounted contingent claim minimum n given the sigma algebra f t. And then it is clear that that process xd, uh, xd plus 1 as well as the process x bar, so our discounted financial market model, are martingales under p infinity. So why is that true? Well, since p infinity is chosen from the set of all equivalent martingale measures, it's clear that that process is a martingale. And by construction of this process xd plus 1, we also know that that process is a martingale. Hence, we also know that this extended financial market model is a martingale under this measure p infinity. And by the first uh, fundamental theorem of asset prices, it then follows that this extended uh, discounted market model is arbitrage free. And here we take advantage of the fact that indeed um, um, p infinity is equivalent to p. So now let us show a new measure p twiddle from the set of all equivalent martingale measures um, which uh, have the additional property that the expected value of the discounted contingent claim is finite and uh, by the um, con as a by the following namely by that computation over here which simply shows that that set is normal empty we know that um, uh, that uh, this set is non-empty. Hence, um, we know that this measure is then also equivalent to this measure p infinity because both measures are chosen from the set of all equivalent martingale measures. And moreover, we know that the expected value of the discounted contingent claim by this choice of this measure p twiddle is finite. Hence, we also know that this um, um, discounted extended uh, price process is also arbitrage free with respect to that measure p twitter. Why is that the case? Well, uh, we simply know that, um, that this uh, that um, we know by assumption that this is a martingale under p twitter and we also uh, know that this extended no we have to conclude it that way we know that this extended process is um, arbitrary under p twitter and we know that um, under p infinity and we know that p twitter is equivalent to p infinity and since the uh, properties of arbitrariness uh, only depends on the null sets of the measure. We also know that this extended discounted price process 
is arbitrary on that filtered probability space. So now we can uh, again use the first fundamental theorem of asset prices to conclude that there exists an equivalent Martingale measure Q um, and some number a K which is finite such that the following holds true. First of all, um, the radon Nicodem derivative dq by d twiddle, uh, twiddle is bounded from above by k, p twiddle almost truly. And on the other hand, um, this um, process, um, uh, this extended price process is a Martigan under q. And this then, uh, this can be used now in the following way. First of all, uh, set this value pi equal to um, the expected value of the discounted contingent claim with respect to this measure q. Now let us rewrite that expected value in terms of this measure p twiddle, which is nothing else but the expected value under p twiddle of the discounted contingent claim times the radon nicotine derivative dq by the uh, p twiddle. Since we know that this density is bounded, we can take out that term, or we can estimate that term from above by k, and use simply monotonicity of the um, expected value to get the following upper bound, namely it's bounded from above by k times the expected value of this, this uh, counter contingent claim uh, under p twiddle, but p twiddle was chosen from the set m star naught, meaning we know that this expected value over here is finite. Hence, we know that this value over here by the first part of the theorem is contained in the set of all uh, discounted arbitrage free prices of our contingent claim C. On the other hand, um, we also know uh, that um, uh, um, that this uh, value pi can be bounded from below by the expected value under this measure q um, of the following uh, restriction, namely we I take the um, discounted uh, contingent claim and uh, perform the minimum with any uh, natural number n. And this natural number n we, I chose here coincides with this natural number n we have uh, chosen over here. So what do we know then? Well, we simply know that uh, this process we defined over here, so that this value uh, at the terminal time point, so let us have a look over here. So we know at the terminal time point, this is an F capital T measurable random variable. So we can use the measurable factor property of the condition expectation that goes out. And then we know that X D plus one at the time point capital T coincides with that random variable. So let us use that now and let us replace that random variable simply by the terminal value of this process x d plus one. So now I can take advantage of the fact that the um, filtration f naught is um, a trivial, meaning I can also write that expected value over here in terms of the uh, conditional expectation given the sigma algebra f not you almost surely. But now q is an equivalent martingale measure. Hence, I know that, um, uh, that uh, this um, random variable over here uh, is equal to the um, uh, value of the, uh, the initial value of the process x d plus one. On the other hand, by the construction over here, we also know that the initial value is equal to the conditional expectation 
of um, uh, x and d plus 1 um, um, at the terminal time point capital T given the sigma algebra f naught and again using the um, triviality of that uh, sigma algebra f naught I can rewrite this condition expectation in terms of the expected value of x d plus 1 at the terminal time point capital T with respect to that measure p infinity but by construction we know that that expected value is larger than c so in that way we have proven um, that uh, on that set uh, this uh, supremum simply um, goes to infinity and from that um, we uh, simply can conclude the proof. Why? Well, so you see, um, if that set is non-empty, so we know on, uh, on that complement the expected value is infinity. So, but then we have shown that also in that situation that expected value over here has to be infinity. And this we just constructed. Maybe we constructed with, with the help of um, um, these measures, uh, these equivalent measures Q with finite expectation, we ensured that that expected value can be as large as we want. Namely, it can be larger than any value C. And in that way we see that once that side is infinity, also that side is infinity. And this finally concludes the proof. So here is a simple corollary of what we have seen so far. So suppose S is a d plus 1 dimensional arbitrage free financial market model and C is now again an attainable contingent claim. Then it is clear that the set of all um, discounted arbitrage free prices um, consists only of one single value. So why is that the case? Well, by the previous lemma 2.18, we know uh, that um, the expected value of the discounted contingent claim with respect to any equivalent Martingale measure is a constant. Let's call that constant pi. On the other hand, we know by the previous theorem that the set of all uh, discounted uh, arbitrage free prices is non-empty uh, and this immediately shows that uh, this, um, um, this set over here has to contain this value pi but since pi is a constant we also see that this is the only value uh, this set can um, uh, consist of and in particular it shows that in that particular situation the uh, two bounds, namely pi inf of this discounted contingent claim and pi sub of this contingent, uh, discounted contingent claim has to coincide.